Welcome to Category Management Knowledge Group's course preview on store clustering through store level and geodemographic data and tools. The many changes in our competitive landscape have driven a need to adapt the category management approach to become even more collaborative, flexible, forward-looking, and shopper-centric. A first step is for retailers to group their stores beyond store size and volume and expand to consider shared demographics and customer purchasing patterns. From here, the opportunity is to create cluster-specific assortments, shelving, promotions, and pricing strategies that meet the different shopper needs. Retailers and vendors who try to move to shopper-focused solutions will be limited in their approach until they cluster their stores to reflect their shoppers and their needs. This video will give you a snippet from our certified online course on store clustering through store level and geodemographic data and tools. Enjoy the course! Here are the learning objectives for this course. In the fully accredited training course, you will learn the different approaches to store clustering. It's beneficial information for retailers, category analysts, sales and marketing teams to help them to make more strategic decisions or recommendations for the retailer's business. Here are the questions that we address in the full version of Chapter 1, which focuses on the foundations of store clustering through an understanding of where it fits in category management, the data sources required at store level to be able to store cluster, and how to start defining the target shopper. In this preview, we'll cover some learnings associated with store clusters. As technology and data have evolved over the years and the retailer battleground for market share has continued, category management has continued to shift and evolve. The scope of category management has evolved and expanded to include new data sources such as shopper loyalty card data, geodemographic demand, store level point of sale, and shopper insights being added. At the same time, the market has become more fragmented due to greater shopper diversity and new competition emerging across channels, including online. As a result, more new category management challenges have been exposed and new opportunities have been revealed. Store clustering and geodemographic data analysis is really the starting point for understanding shopper marketing or shopper insights. Shopper marketing refers to all manners of influencing the shopper, from when the consumer perceives a need and is motivated to start the path to the purchase, to creating a shopping list or initiating a shopping mission, to researching a prospective purchase, to considering which retail avenues to shop and choosing a store or website to shop at, and ultimately looking at the product choices they present to making a purchase decision. Shopper marketing includes all research associated with understanding the shopper's path to purchase. Because of all this focus on the consumer and shopper, a new internal and external model is required that's consumer and shopper centric. You need to understand who the consumer is and what types of things influence them like pre-store media, pricing, packaging, and product development. After you understand the consumer, you need to understand the shopper, the person who is actually going to the store to purchase the products. What influences the shopper while in the store? How do things like store layout, product assortment, fixture design, planograms, and promotional strategies affect their purchase behavior? Becoming consumer-centric through understanding pre-store decision-making and shopper-centric through in-store shopper insights increases understanding of both the consumer and the shopper. This model, which is owned by Smart Revenue, allows retailers and suppliers to increase sales through consumer and shopper-centric insights that they can provide through a series of assessments and processes. In the rest of this course, we're going to focus on the shopper and the store. 
there are three primary focuses for the full version of this accredited training course. First, we review the key store level data sources available that are required to get to the next level of shopper marketing. Next, we learn why store clustering is so important for retailers and some different approaches to store clustering, including creating demand indices. And finally, we learn how to complete analysis based on geodemographic analysis. One of the data sources covered in the course is retailer loyalty data. Loyalty cards have been around since 1988, and supermarket and drugstore chains are starting to collect the massive amount of data on shoppers, from the types of products they buy to when they like to buy them. Retailers are starting to track consumer trends, and they're changing their merchandise, store layout, and advertising accordingly to keep their most loyal shoppers spending. Loyalty card programs are in over 30% of grocery stores. Grocery retailers are still not quite sure how to manage the data. In many cases, the internal loyalty data is skewed because 62% of loyalty card shoppers have multiple loyalty cards and many retailers offer a ghost card for non-card holders. In addition, retailers best shoppers buy 50% of their groceries in other grocery stores or channels. However, information from loyalty cards combined with channel and consumer insights can help retailers market in a manner that builds loyalty and profitable growth. Retailers estimate that 20% of their shoppers account for 80% of store sales, so finding out what their best shoppers want is essential. By scanning purchases, stores track what's selling, but when that data is tied to loyalty cards, merchants obtain richer information on who is buying what. Services that may seem helpful to consumers could be a way to get them to spend more. Retailers need to build a new set of strategies for store clusters, groups of stores that have similar shoppers, performance, and traits, or even for unique stores, and then assemble the right resources with the right ideas and competencies to take advantage of the different opportunities. Store clustering groups stores together based on shared demographics and shopper purchasing patterns and can take on new value as retailers look to localization to differentiate themselves and improve performance. There are many reasons to do store clustering. It introduces a common language to describe stores within a retail organization and helps to improve store planning, assortment, and merchandising, with a specific focus on optimum assortment and shelving for each cluster, category, and even subcategory. Store clustering allows you to identify the external attributes that relate to the shopper, including who they are and their purchase behavior, which gives insights into internal factors that drive optimum performance for each of these groups based on a deeper understanding of the different shoppers. This ultimately results in extreme shopper satisfaction because all of their needs are being met and winning solutions for retailers. There are many different approaches to the segmentation and clustering of stores from very basic, through store grading, all the way to highly advanced, or statistical clustering. We will now walk through some examples of how these types of store clustering can be done, but realize that because of all of the data sources that may be available, there are many other ways to cluster. Store grading is a basic segmentation analysis that's used to divide stores into groups based on the store volume, this is the criteria for segmentation. Department and category store segmentation adds in an element of segmenting stores differently by category. Multivariant store segmentation is an approach that segments stores based on a set of criteria, including consumer demographics. And statistical clustering is the most advanced approach 
that uses statistical classification techniques. Let's go through each of these cluster types in detail. Retailers should cluster their stores based on more attributes than just store volume and store size. Think about some of the different attributes that can significantly affect differences across stores. Some attributes may be more physical. Store size is a physical attribute that can influence store volume significantly. Similar geographic locations and climate conditions can also influence a variety of categories. Other attributes are based on the consumer, based on consumer purchase behavior like loyalty and conversion. Finally, consumer demographics can also be used when store clustering. For example, based on income levels, age or ethnicity, with a focus on the most loyal or heaviest buying consumers. Each of these attributes can be significantly different at a category level, which drills one level deeper into understanding that all-important consumer. The rest of this course walks through how you do each of the different types of store clustering in detail, followed by training on geodemographics and location intelligence, which is a powerful way for you to increase consumer focus. We've now given you a glimpse of our certified course on store clustering through store level and geodemographic data and tools. There are many options for you to choose from if you're interested in purchasing this course. The online course is available for purchase through Our House, which is Category Management Knowledge Group's state-of-the-art online training center. If you'd prefer, we can also run a private webinar for up to 200 people for a cost of $3,000, or a live session at a national or team meeting. If you're from a larger organization where many people would want access to the course, we can also make the course available for you to use within your own internal learning management system. Your choices are limitless. According to the Category Management Association, Category Management provides established framework and relationships to introduce shopper marketing insights, as well as the process to plan and implement tactics that capitalize on an understanding of shoppers and their path to purchase. Category management and shopper marketing need to be a part of one strategy as retailers and vendors collaborate to understand what motivates consumers to become shoppers and purchasers along their path to purchase. CMKG can help with this. The opportunity is to infuse Shopper into the category management approach, which includes an extension into understanding the category management foundations, retailer strategy, and Shopper understanding, and starts with training solutions that provide a holistic, bigger picture consumer and Shopper perspective for your team or organization. Category Management Knowledge Group can work with you to help you set up curriculum that will achieve this through a custom training program. So, where do you go from here? If you're interested in purchasing this certified course or working with us to help you determine training opportunities to align your category management and shopper approach for your organization, please contact us. This will help you to move forward to improved shopper-focused solutions for your organization as well as a more collaborative approach with your retailer or vendor partners. We don't believe in a one-size-fits-all approach and will consult with you to ensure that what we deliver meets your specific needs and business issues. We hope to hear from you soon. Have an excellent day.